I'm Dave with Berkovich. We're going over RoboCoop. Um, I will try to get it as in depth as possible, but always consult the manual for questions. All right. So this is a combination RoboCoop piece. Uh, the most common ones you probably see on the small red ones, the R2. They're great for making aioli's and pestos, and that's about it. This is a little heavier duty. We can dice, slice, grate, chop, and we also have a bowl for doing aioli's, hummus, da 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 da. So to get this, this is the slicer dicer attachment. First off, we'll go over the safety features on it. There is a magnet right here. When it's closed, it makes the connection here and will allow it to run. When I open it, it stops so my staff can't jam their hand in here and cut their fingers off. There is also sensors in here. So when I take it off, it recognizes it's not connected and it will stop running. Comes off just like that. You guys want to come up here real quick to get a better angle of it? So right there is where it goes on. It's, you, you can even take like a marker and mark it so the kids can see it. Otherwise, they'll still struggle for a while trying to get this lined up right. And then go until it clicks. Take it back off. It's just that right there. So you have, right now you have a grater and a slicer. We make about uh, 10 million different blade options for this thing. That's an exaggeration, I'd say. We have uh, everything from like a, oh, like a quarter inch dice all the way up to an inch and a quarter dice. So we want, if you want like veg prep for soups or anything like that, and you don't want to pay somebody to sit there chopping by hand, I can do a couple hundred pounds in a matter of minutes in here. So probably the best way to fly. So open the lid. You guys can see in here, I have what we call a discharge plate. See, there's two different sides, okay? This side is for delicate stuff, like if I'm doing tomatoes, uh, maybe avocado, something will get beat up pretty well. I wanna use this one, it'll fling it a little less harder. If I'm doing carrots, potatoes, celery, I don't give a crap, I'll hammer them with this one. So put it in, make sure it goes all the way down, okay? And then choose your blade, and this one will go on, and I usually just give it a spin, and it'll fall, okay? If you're using blades, either slicing or grating or the dicer, these are razor sharp, okay? They will cut somebody at least once, so be very, very careful. I'm just warning you. There are screws on top, so if we ever have to replace a blade, the blades are like 10, 15 bucks versus 100 and some bucks for the blade, or the whole thing, take these off, put some new blades on. If you guys start doing a lot of slicing and cutting with this, I would suggest getting a couple extra blades, put them in the office somewhere. So when somebody does this number, I hate this place, smacks it with a screwdriver, you don't have a dinged up plate. Okay, it happens. Same thing, let it fall. Lock it in. If I'm doing vegetables, any kind of slicing, dicing, grating, the faster this goes, the more friction I'm gonna have. So if I'm doing cheeses, I wanna keep that low. Um, a good advice on cheese is to maybe throw it in the freezer for five, 10 minutes to a little firm it up, especially with something soft like a, um, Fontina or something like that. If it's something a little harder like Asiago or, or Gruyere, it's a little tougher, you can do it. On high is what I use for the bowl. Low for the attachment. Otherwise, if I throw a sweet potato or a carrot in here and run it on high, I'm gonna make confetti. It's just gonna blow it up. Okay, it's too hard. Especially if it's coming straight from the fridge, like a yam or something out of the fridge, it will just destroy it. So what would you slice on high? Nothing. So always keep the blade speed on low? For the attachment. The bowl we do high. Got it. Yeah. Actually, the newer ones have a picture of the attachment. The other one has a picture of the bowl, so people can visualize that. Um, and then to take it apart, there's a little pin on the back for taking the top off for cleaning. Um, keep this out of the dishwasher. It's aluminum. Most dishwashers have a, a pretty heavy chemical that will gray it out, get it nice and ugly. Let's not do it by hand. Uh, blades by hand, obviously. Um, on the top, there's a kidney-shaped uh, hopper for the vegetables or whatever you're gonna slice and, and dice. The blade on Roboku spins this direction. Sorry, it's this direction, back for us today. Counterclockwise. Counter. So if we're doing something like sliced tomatoes, we wanna make sure we have sliced tomatoes and not tomato pieces. So make sure whatever we're cutting goes up against the side right here. Okay. So when the blade comes around, it's pulling it against the wall instead of doing this number. So I put a tomato in over here, it's gonna be confetti by the time it comes up. Okay. And then if we're doing 
something like carrots, cucumber, anything on a continuous feed, we can put it through this hopper here and I can just keep it running. So when I take this out, it doesn't stop. But unless you have a three-year-old working here, he's not gonna get his hand inside it. Okay, it's pretty safe. Um, but if I use this one, it stops every time I open it and it starts back up. This way I can just keep going. Depending on what you're doing, I don't care what it is, don't stand on it and don't just let it fall and let it bounce around. Just keep steady pressure on it. Don't force it too hard. Force it too hard, we start bending the thing. So just be gentle with it. Um, and that's about it for the attachments. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this one I take off. And then the bowl is pretty much the same concept as every other Roboku piece if you've used them. Huh? Smart, they put the blade chart in this thing. All right, so I was talking about the different, different blades and stuff. We have many different options. Um, and the actual size right here is pretty much the size. So if you're like, okay, 10 millimeter, that's that thick, that's too big. That's about what you're looking for for soup. That's an actual size. Okay, so keep this around, it's very handy. If you realize it's taking your staff three hours to cut soup veg every day, use this and get it done in 20 minutes and have them scrub or do something else. Okay. Blade, sharp as razors, okay? Somebody will cut themselves and that's super careful. So make sure you just hammer home that these are very sharp pieces. Bowl. Bring it over here till it locks. Okay. Blade goes in, spin it till it drops. You're ready to go when the blade is touching the bottom, almost a hair off the bottom. If it's up, I can't even do it wrong. If it's not on there right, it, will, it won't even run right. So, um, yeah, you can't even get it in because there's like this, the oddball shape of that spindle. It won't even go on unless you have it lined up right. So, all the way to the bottom. Lid off to the side, closed, and then run. If you're doing something that you want to get too much friction on, like if it's a, um, I don't like an oil-based emulsion, like say you're doing a, uh, not an ounce, like a, a mayo aioli, something like that, where you don't want to keep the oil up too much and kind of break down its viscosity, you can do a lower one, maybe high just to get the emulsion started. Then once it starts, you know, we can hammer the heck out of it. Um, but you don't want to heat it up too much, go to low. But I usually run high for most everything. You know, unless you don't want to pulverize like cashews or something for a topping, do low. Um, but high works pretty fine for the bowl. Then to take it off, same thing, everything in reverse. A little safety latch right there to get it off. Pull it off, clean by hand, okay? Only thing as far as maintenance on this is the gasket comes off, okay? You'll see there is a notch right here. So when I put it back on, that notch goes where my locking piece goes. Okay, so we'll wanna put it in just like that. Curved side goes into the lid. You just wanna make sure that that gap is right there, just like that. Make sense? Yeah. Right back over. All right, so that's Roboku in a nutshell. Pretty much all the Roboku pieces, everything from the R2 up to the our giant vertical mixers, they all work kind of the same concept. So, but if you ever get another one in, I'll come back and treat training. Just make sure you guys aren't cutting any hands off. All right.